All right, so here I have a 04 Mustang, right? And uh, the owner of this vehicle, she watches my Instagram. So, no hard feelings, but it's just what I do. <laughs> car gets the same treatment like every other car, okay? So it's gotta go on Instagram. Uh, here's the thing, she dropped it off, right? Her car was broken into, so they kind of messed up all the locks. And, you know, the car gets parked in front, so what do I do? I lock the doors, so no one gets into it, right? While it's in my possession. Then I find out the key doesn't unlock in the doors because locks are messed up because from when someone tried to break into it, obviously. So I'm lock out the car, okay? So I come up with this method. Put some uh, plastic prying tools right there and right there. And, and the fact that it's a convertible just slightly makes it easier. So now we got this gap, right? And next up, I tried a variety of different tools and what seemed to work best for me is actually my hose clamp pliers. So what we're going to do is uh, snake it inside of here. And you can actually see right there. That's what we have to pull up on in order to unlock the door. Alright, so I have the tool in place. And if you look inside of there, uh, you can kind of see I have it locked right on top. I got a pretty good grip on it. I'm just going to go ahead and pull it up. Let's see. Come on. There we go. Boom. Alright, let me get this out of here. It's hard to do it one hand. But now, got the door open. And that's how I had to do it, okay? So that took a while to get into the car. Then I get into the car, go to start it, and absolutely nothing, right? Come on here, check the battery. And I and this is them cleaned up, okay? They were horrible. But the thing is, so it now starts, but the thing is, look at all these wires. Completely corroded. Same thing on the pass on the positive side. Everything is just nasty. These wires need to get replaced. This time I have plenty uh plenty of time invested in this, right? <laughs> Keep in mind I'm just reenacting all of this, okay? So this isn't the first time. Alright, so we finally get it to start, okay? Car starts right and I'm like cool and I can pull it into the garage. Got my foot on the brake nothing I had to grab a screwdriver and I could see this is already all mangled up I did not do do this it was really like that so I had to grab a flathead screwdriver and go in there and push down on a little metal tab inside of there so it could release and I could move the car it's like you know one obstacle after another um, so yeah definitely frustrating just to get the car into the garage I just opened up the trunk on the Mustang and it looks like we are getting a complete makeover here. Now when I had the car running I did notice the battery light was on and I did not even know that we had a new alternator for it. Um, so I was going to actually call the owner and let her know, hey, you may need an alternator. But there was already one in the trunk so I guess I uh, told her about this. Here, here's what's going on with this car. I looked at it. A while ago and I mean a while ago okay I told her what was wrong what it was gonna need and you know it takes time for people to get you know the money together or get the parts together so it's been so long since I looked at this car I could not remember what I told her so she just bought everything I told her previously and dropped the car off with all the parts I'm not super familiar with these uh, Mustangs but uh I took out this one long bolt it goes right here and all of a sudden I'm looking for the other bolt I'm like where is it and then I see this, I'm like, wait, what the heck's going on here? And it just moves. Move that one bolt and the whole thing could come off. To me, it looked like there should be some su support. If I can get it in frame. Some support bracket right here. Or am I wrong? Is, it, is that, that can't be right. It's not supposed to just hit that, right? So the plot thickens, okay? Here's the new alternator and it, it actually fits. So that lines up here. And when you put the bottom one in place, that's going to line up right there and you got to put a bolt in it all right notice these are going to be in different locations as well but I checked the harness and it does uh, reach and if we come look at the old alternator it's a different design so the reason why it was sitting like that is someone put an alternator that just doesn't belong on this car that's why it didn't fit right uh, 
this is gold right here. <laughs> I'm looking through my collection of uh, bolts, and I found one that fits the thread pitch right here. It's not very long, uh, but it does fit. And if we set it right up where it belongs, we're gonna get about that much thread engagement. So maybe three eighths of an inch, maybe something like that. That's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt it up. And at least the alternator will be supported how it's supposed to be. And we actually have the correct alternator on this car. New alternator is in place. Let's go ahead and start it up and see if the battery light is off. And yes, immediately the battery light is off. Let's go check the target. So apparently her trunk is like the Barney bag because it's freaking never ending apart. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I guess we're doing air filter, oil change, and looks like a complete tune-up. I don't know about this though. She might be able to uh, return this because first of all, I don't think the engine's misfiring. And um, basically if it's not broke, don't fix it, especially if you're using a value craft part. Now, if it was a good quality part. I'll be like, all right, let's change it, you know, out of maintenance. But honestly, the one that's on the car is probably better than this new part right here. So here we have the first spark plug. And look at that. Yeah, this uh, this should be fun. Uh, this is really unfortunate. Um, you can see what's going on here with this Mustang. Uh, the owner has like tape and staples everywhere to hold on this plastic bag. But it rained like crazy last night. And I can only imagine how much water got inside of this car. Uh, these damn convertibles. So once she gets the car back, she's going to have to uh, completely air it out. Vacuum the inside and stuff like that. I'm going to try to... If, well, if it continues to rain, I'm going to try to get the car in the garage, but I got my garage full of uh, crap, so let's uh, see what I can do. Alright, so I'm all done with the tune-up, right, and uh, it's running much better. It sounds real nice and smooth. The engine sounds healthy, and uh, it's time to go ahead and put it up on these ramps and do an oil change. Alright, so here's all the plugs that came out of the Mustang. One in the center right there almost looks like it's brand new. Next step on this Mustang is uh, the rear brakes. Got the new rotor on, everything is all cleaned up. Got the bracket sandblasted. Trying to put new pads on and the back will be all set. I'm going to do the front brakes when I do the lower control arm. It just makes sense to, uh, you know, do all of that stuff together. Uh, what I'm doing today is installing new tail lights that the customer dropped off. So here goes a new one. And these are the old ones. Honestly, I do like the new ones better, but we have an issue. Took the new ones right out the box, and guess what? We already have a crack on it, if you could see that. The customer is going to see if she could return these. If she is going to get them returned, uh, then I just did this for nothing. I'm gonna have to pull it back out. Anyway, uh, it's getting kind of a complete makeover. The front end's kind of all messed up. So we have a new bumper here. Uh, there's a lip to go on the bumper. We have new headlights for the front. And then we have the headlight support brace. And we also have, right on the cowl, underneath the windshield wipers, all of this because the one on her car just shattered. Now coming inside the car, we have the issue where the car starts up but it won't let you put it into drive or anything. She also said the brake lights don't work, okay? So she told me it was going to be the switch. So we went ahead and ordered the switch. It's a pretty cheap part, right? Come down here to install it and what do I find? Right here is your problem. 
so most likely you didn't even need a switch the switch is probably fine it's just a broken wire but since we have the new part and it makes no sense to try to send back a part because we bought it online it makes no sense to try to send back a part that was so uh, inexpensive so we might as well just slap the new part on and I have the new brake switch installed and I repaired that wire so let's go ahead and test it Okay, so I'm just using the car that's parked behind me to see the reflection. It doesn't pick up very well on camera, but I could definitely see the brake lights turning on. And now let's see if it'll come out of park. And sure enough, it does. So that's it. Problem fixed. Uh, it was really a broken wire and uh, it got the new part simply because we already had it and why not, right? Maintenance. I got the bumper off of the Mustang and I've already installed the headlight support if that's what you want to call it. And uh, don't you just love fighting with aftermarket parts to get them to fit? I don't miss it at all. I dealt with it every day when I worked in the body shop. But it's on. So uh, let's get that new bumper ready and the new headlights. So there's a few things we have to get ready before we just uh, slap the bumper on. The first thing is the brackets that go on the side of the bumper here. Uh, so the customer did supply all of this stuff along with new rivets. I got the one on this side already. It's already riveted in place. Something I found funny is this side is stamped R but it clearly goes on the left side and the one that's stamped L goes on the right side so someone messed up. Looking at the old one you can see they just uh, went at it all ghetto and just put screws and everything. So, at least we're getting it done right, putting it uh, with rivets how it's supposed to be held in, and uh, go from there. Now that I got both of uh, the brackets riveted in place, now we could try to install this uh, lip that goes on the bottom of the bumper here. So, I'm just going to try to line it up the best I can, and we're going to drill little like pilot holes and then run in the little screws that were supplied with the kit alright so I'm just about done installing this lip and to me this thing looks really nice I like the I like the curvature of the lip how it just comes right off of the bumper right there it looks real good now I try to be as picky as I can installing this as if I were installing it on my own car so right here I started the lip exactly flush with the bumper and I try to keep keep all of this flush as, as well you know, I think it turned out nice. It's looking real good. I, j I just really like the way it looks. The only issue I came across is right here, by the time you get to the end, because I started on the other side, so by the time you get to the end, you can see they no longer match up. And that's kind of to be expected because you have an aftermarket bumper and an aftermarket part here. So sometimes you have to modify them slightly. So I'm thinking of just grabbing the Dremel and just cutting it right there so it's you know, nice and flush. But other than that, I think it looks great. So I'm just doing a quick test fit of the new headlights. They're not wired up yet. I still have to wire them up because of these uh, halo rings. So all that stuff needs to work with the light switch. You can see the bumper fit up nicely right here. Uh, what else? The headlights are matching up nicely. Got it connected to this uh, center brace right here. And the front lip on it looks great. I love it. Look at that. Alright. Uh, one thing. I got the spray paint out. One thing I noticed is. Uh, once we put the grill in it. You may be able to see this orange paint back, back, paint back here. And I don't like it. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this up. I should have painted it while all this stuff was off the car. But I didn't think about it. So I'm going to go ahead and protect this piece and the bumper and spray some black spray paint back there. And there we go. It's not perfect, but it looks a lot better. The orange color doesn't like, jump out at you. So uh, I'm happy with that. Just waiting on a customer to bring the grill over right now so I could install it. In the meantime, I'm going to go forward with uh, the wiring on the headlights. Actually, before I start messing with the wiring on the headlights I'm gonna install this piece right here you can see it's all broken I'm gonna go ahead and blow this off to clean as much as I can and uh, 
we have new pieces right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this done first. I'm all done putting this piece of plastic underneath the wipers here. Not too bad of a job. I went ahead and trimmed the lip just so I got to use some sandpaper to clean up the rough edges. I cleaned that up a little bit. Put the headlights on it. The headlights are not wired up still. Put the grill. The customer just dropped by to drop off the grill. And there's a similar grill that goes in the lower section right here. She got a new plate. Uh, this one used to be on her old bumper, but it was all torn up and everything. So she bought a new one. We, and I put some nice uh, stainless steel hardware here so they don't rust. Um, what else? She stopped by to clean out the water that had gotten inside of here. And the trunk was basically a swimming pool. So we just pulled the plug out and it let all the water drain out. And right now I'm in the process of doing the lower control arms. And because no job can ever go as planned, we have a bolt that was seized, or I should say the bushing was seized to the bolt. So uh, this side came out just fine. So all I did is I put my 24 millimeter socket right on the nut and I started hitting it with the air hammer. You could see my socket right there, how it's deformed from hitting it with the air hammer. But if we come on this side, you can see it's starting to come out. So that's a win. Pretty happy for that. It is now 9 p.m. and I'm gonna call it a night. I got the lower control arm out. Here's a bolt that was uh, seized inside of there. And here's the control arm. Alright, so I just had a really dumb moment. So I'm at the point where, okay, I'm done tonight, right? So I figure I'm going to clean up all my tools. I started closing up the windows on the Mustang, and I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and park it in the garage for tonight. It, let's just say it took longer than I like to admit for me to realize that, hey, dummy, all the suspension is taken apart. This car is not moving. <laughs> That's how you know I'm tired. I did a quick sandblast on the bolt. It was all rusty and crusty. You can see it's a little bit pitted. I haven't cleaned up the thread so I could put that nut back on it because I did damage the bolt a little bit with the air hammer. But I got that all fixed and I'm just going to use some of this uh, synthetic grease on the bolt and inside of uh, these sleeves right here. Maybe to uh, try to prevent or slow down the corrosion the next time. Alright, so I'm all done on the right side. Control arm is in. Front brakes are done. And I just have to repeat the same process on the driver's side. I'm not really going to be recording too much unless something extraordinary happens. But one thing that's interesting is look at this rotor. Look at the taper on it. Uh, it might not pick up very well. But uh, this thing has a crazy like taper, you know, like going downward as it comes out. Um, that's interesting. Alright, so I'm going to call it a night. I pretty much got all the hard work done. I kept pushing off this uh, lower control arm job because I just really didn't want to do it. But it's in. Like I said, the hard work is done. Tomorrow I'm going to come out here, uh, reattach the, the rack and pinion, put the brakes on the car, the stabilizer bar or connect the stabilizer links I mean and then I can put the car back on the ground um, and all I have left to do is put that lower grill in wire up the headlights and this Mustang will be all set now because it's still sitting outside if you look at the windows here you can see this gap and water gets in I don't know what's going on but both sides are like this so you know, I put these little covers over it made out of rubber with some weights to hold them down so the wind doesn't blow them away. Um, it's not my car, but I still care about it. You know, I don't want any more water to get into it. So, And it's pretty much all done. Just finished wiring up both of the front headlights. 
and uh, obviously they are off right now so I'm gonna go ahead and turn them on the first setting which is kind of like the daytime running lights so let's see how that looks okay so that's what the daytime running lights on you can see those uh, halo rings and like the three LEDs off to the left and the right along with the, the marker lights the orange lights all the way on the corners so that's pretty much what they're tapped into so let's go ahead and pull the knob one more time and turn on the headlights and there we go headlights are on I checked the high beam so everything works and it's looking good so that's a wrap on this Mustang the customer can now pick it up and uh, it needs obviously needs some other work but uh, that's for another day alright so we're here with this uh, Accord the owner just brought it over to look at she said the muffler sounds really loud and look at that someone's tried to steal their converter that's crazy so now the car is very loud while you're driving because there's a cut in the exhaust system that, that really sucks, these petty ass people out here, still in catalytic converters. Alright, so I'm here working on this uh, Monte Carlo here. And the owner bought new rotors, new pads, new CV shafts, and new wheel bearings. Uh, the same thing for both sides of the car. And I don't think he had the car looked at, it's just one of those things where he hears a noise so he just kind of goes out and buys everything. Um, I looked at both of the CV shafts and I don't see them torn. The boot, the boots uh, look fine. So I talked to him about it and he decided we're just gonna go ahead and hold off on the CV shafts for now. And we're gonna go ahead and replace the front brakes and both of the front wheel bearings. And looking at the inside pad, you could really see why this thing was causing so much noise. That's crazy. The pad is completely jammed in there. I got the old wheel bearing out as you can see. It came out with one hit. Just dunk. Fell right out. Got the new one in. And now it's time to just put the new brakes on it. Today I'm working on this uh, 08 Cadillac CTS. And uh, we have a bad alternator. Uh, and it's like super bad. To the point where... Uh, so you got a jumper pack on it, the car starts and runs, the second you disconnect the jump pack, the car just shuts off. So uh, alternator is not supplying any power. And it's kind of a sad day because today we are taking this uh, Harley 1200 uh, Sportster. It's going to go get uh, traded into a dealer. Original owner, uh, we've been trying to sell it but nobody really wants to pay the price it's got like less than 5,000 miles on it so it's practically a new bike you know it's been garage kept ever since it was new but uh we got no fish biting so we're just gonna take it to a dealer and let them give us whatever the heck they want to give us for it because it's just taking up space okay so new alternator is installed uh, the first sign that was a good sign is you disconnect the jump starter and the car stays running checking our voltage here we are at 14.7 volts so uh, pretty good voltage here the alternator is doing its job and that'll be it for this Cadillac alright so I'm putting the new mirror on this Camry it's trying to remove the door panel right now and uh, all this stuff fell out somebody gets a lot of action <laughs> I got the parts for this uh, Toyota Camry and uh, so I decided to start working on it uh, early in the morning. I figured why not, right? Uh, I was thinking I was going to have to remove this pipe right here. And see how rusty it looks. But before I even decided to touch it, I was like, let me pull the new radiator out of the box. And it's nice to see it comes with all new pipes on it. So there's no need to touch any of this besides like remove the hoses. And uh, yeah, oh. Also got the new hose in. Let's go ahead and finish putting this thing back together. This is the clamp that was on the lower side of the radiator and as you can see it's uh, it's seen better days. So what I'm going to do is take the clamp off of the upper side of the hose and place it on the lower side because it's uh, much more difficult to get to. 
and since I don't have a replacement I'm gonna have to reuse this old crusty one but I'm gonna put it on the top of the radiator hose where it's uh, much easier to get to in case it does cause a problem we could easily change it out alright so I'm just about done with this uh, radiator install it's going pretty smooth and here's what I was talking about earlier we put the clamp down there the one that's in uh, good condition it's not gonna or it shouldn't give us any problems and the one that's uh, are rusty and we put it on top because it's much easier to get to in case we need to change it uh, yeah so this is a pretty easy job here um, I had another cus customer call me right now asking when he could drop his vehicle off to get front brakes done I told him uh, be here in about an hour okay and he says oh I'm at work right now I won't be out till 5 so why ask me I don't understand this I get this all the time people ask me hey when can I bring my car all right, be here in 30 minutes. Oh, I can't do it till after 4 p.m. Why? Why? Why don't you just tell me? <laughs> tell me what works for you instead of, you know, asking me and then saying, no, I can't do that. It's so stupid. It just really... Here we have a 2009 Grand Caravan. And you can see the situation with the brakes. Also, there's a little bit of play in the outer tie rod. And the stabilizer link is broken on this side. And broken on the other side. C -c 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 Combo breaker! Alright, so I'm still working on this uh, Grand Caravan. I'm done doing the brakes on the left side, okay? But here's a problem. When I took off these two lug nuts, they came out just fighting. Alright, so guess what? It's time to put them back on, and they're not going. So here I am with a uh, tab set, or die set, I don't know what the heck you want to call them. I'm just frustrated at this point. But here I am trying to repair the threads and salvage whatever I can, and the same thing for the nut. This is the real world, people. Okay, that whole... Uh, Remove the caliper, remove these two bolts, then remove the wheel bearing. All that crap is fake, okay? <laughs> this is the type of crap you really want run into when you're working on cars, so. I managed to repair one of them. As you can see, I got the lug nut back on it. This one, the threads are just too far mangled up. I'm not even gonna bother with it and, and risk damaging my tool. There is a little bit of play up and down in this thing and I checked it, it is the wheel bearing. So the fact that it needs a wheel bearing, I'm not even going to waste my time on this. I remember this uh, caravan. This guy brought it to me maybe like a year ago for front brakes. And uh, it needed a wheel bearing back then. And it still needs a wheel bearing. Alright, so this is the last update on this caravan, I promise. <laughs> Yeah, so just as I suspected, broken stabilizer link on the right side. This tie rod is slightly loose also. And what do you know, we also have a bad wheel bearing on the right side. So this thing is just a piece of junk. <laughs> How do you drive a car with two bad wheel bearings and all this other crap just clunking around? It's amazing. Alright, so I am in a 2001 or 2002 Saturn. SL1 I believe and I just bought it for $225 it drives AC works uh, the guy just doesn't want it anymore because he bought uh, that Nissan Versa I was just working on I've actually done a lot of work on this Saturn recently he's put a lot of money into it and he was gonna send it to the junkyard and they offered him $200 I told him, hey, I'll give you more than a junkyard. How much do you want? So he said 225 Now, I actually do not need the car. I just bought it because I knew or know someone who's in need of a car. So what I'm going to do is basically just hand the car over to them and they pay me the $225 that I paid for the car. And that'll be it. We'll just keep up with uh, regular maintenance. You know, do, uh, do whatever needs to be fixed on it. And that'll be it. Uh, I just saw an opportunity to basically help someone out who needed a car and also save a car from going to the junkyard, especially one that the owner just put so much money into it. And here's just a quick walk around of the car. 
for $225 you cannot beat a running car but the AC works so I'm just really glad it's gonna see a new home instead of going to a junkyard